Hi everyone, Tom here from Frontend Beginners, and in this video, we'll look at how to overlap flex items in CSS Flexbox. For this example, I've set up a simple flex container that's 1000 pixels wide and given it a grey background. Inside it, I've got three child flex items, each with a width of 50%, with the third item wrapped down onto a second row. Let's say we want item 3 to overlap items 1 and 2, and we want to position it somewhere in the middle here. There's two ways we could do this. The first is by using position relative in combination with top, bottom, left or right values. Let's target our third item. So here in my HTML, I've got my third flex item with a class of item 3. So we'll target item 3 here in the CSS and give it a position of relative. When used on its own, this property won't change anything, but it will allow us to adjust the position of this element relative to its original position. To do this, we'll also give item 3 a top value of minus 50 pixels. This moves the top of our element up by 50 pixels. Next, we'll give it a right value of minus 150 pixels, which moves our element to the right by 150 pixels. As we can see in the browser, item 3 is now overlapping both items 1 and 2. If I reduce the width of the browser window, we can see that it's still able to shrink down in size and keeps its default flexible behavior. Let's delete these three lines of code and look at the second way that we can achieve this. Instead of using position relative, we can use the CSS transform property with a value of translate. The translate value accepts two parameters. The first is how much we want to move the item along the x-axis, or horizontally, and the second is how much we want to move the item along the y-axis, or vertically. For our example, we want to move the item 150 pixels to the right, so we'll first enter a value of 150 pixels. Next, we'll enter a comma and a space to separate it from the second value, and add in minus 50 pixels to move it 50 pixels towards the top. If we look in the browser, we'll see that item 3 has moved into the correct position. As with the previous method, when reducing the width of the browser, the default flexible behavior is not affected. One thing to be aware of with both of these methods is that when using either position relative or transform translate, a new stacking context is created. The stacking context is the order in which HTML elements are stacked on top of one another. By default, elements are stacked according to their order in the HTML, with later items being stacked on top of earlier items. Any item that's given one of these two properties will leave the default stacking context and will be stacked on top of all other items in the HTML regardless of their original source order. To illustrate this, let's remove our transform property from item 3 and instead target item 1. We'll give this a transform property of translate, this time using 150 pixels and 50 pixels. As we can see, item 1 has been repositioned, but is now stacked on top of items 2 and 3. By default, because item 1 comes earlier in the HTML, items 2 and 3 should be stacked on top of it. Because of the transform property that we're using on item 1, it's now in its own new stacking context and ignores the rest of the HTML. To overcome this and have everything return back to its default stacking context, the simplest option is to give all affected items a position value of relative. So in this example, I'll target all of my flex items, which each have a class of flex item, 
so here in my CSS, and simply give them a position of relative. This doesn't affect their actual position on the page, but brings them into the new stacking context along with item 1. Item 1 is now stacked behind items 2 and 3, which is its default position according to the HTML source order. Just to demonstrate that this also works with the relative positioning method we used earlier in the video, I'll remove this transform property from item 1 and instead apply position relative with a left value of 150 pixels and a top value of 50 pixels. Item 1 is now positioned in the same location as the previous example. If I remove the position relative value from all of our flex items, we can see that item 1 is stacked on top of 2 and 3 as it's also in a new stacking context. If I put this position relative property back on all of the items, it returns to its default stacking context. I think that just about covers the basics of overlapping flex items in CSS Flexbox. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.